Hey guys, it is a lovely, uh, drizzly, cold, sometimes snowy, uh, early or sunny, uh, partially rainy, overcast, looks like the sun is actually coming out. Do you remember The Simpsons, that damn smart weather? Does anybody remember that? Uh, is bullshit basically. I was editing uh, like three different videos and I'm like, you know what, I wanna take a break and I wanna film something just to sort of do something fun. I'm gonna do a fragrance collection video. I've never done this, I've wanted to do it for a long time and I thought, what the hell, why not? So I brought all my perfumes out into the living room where I thought there was like a good amount of room. I'm gonna show you all of my fragrances. I think that I have them all here. Um, yes, I have them all here, I think. I'm gonna tell you a couple things before we get started. I'm gonna be butchering names in this video. You're welcome. Uh, what was I going to say? It is raining hard right now, but the sun is coming in through the window. One of the things that I learned from studying perfume is the importance of building your own associations. So I have these sorted how I like them. That's me. You can have them sorted however you want. It should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you are shopping, please ignore the gender rules with perfume. It makes no sense beyond marketing and it's silly. You can wear whatever you want. I'm sure that I will give you a little bit of information. I'm sure that I will talk notes. I'm sure that I will nerd out a little bit on some of this stuff, but you know, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll just ignore me. Either way, we're fine. We should probably get started before the sun like really starts blazing in here because it was snowing this morning. Let's turn this around and get started. Okay, I'm realizing very quickly as we get started that we're probably gonna see every little dog hair that's backlit on this thing, but we're, we're gonna get over that as quick as possible. So I'm gonna kind of go down the line. We have a lot of um, citrus and green and some fruity uh, fragrances here. I don't wanna talk about every single one because we would be here all day. This is just a collection video. Um, Eau Sauvage, Christian Dior, Eau de Lancome, um, Royal Lime and Guerlain's Pamplaloon. This is in the Aqua Allegory line. These are all very citrus heavy fragrances. Give me something with lime and I am a very happy person. Elizabeth Arden Green Tea, Bronze Goddess Soleil. I have Escape for Men by Calvin Klein. That is me in high school at 17 years old. Also uh, Escape for Women and uh, CK1, uh, Aqua Digio, uh, Giorgio Armani. These are all, um, <laughs> CK one's very citrusy, but I still kind of put them in the same camp as, I, I think you would call them ozonic, um, but I just call them kind of citrusy, aquatic-y kind of uh, fragrances. They're super 90s. This is like my 90s section. Um, they're pretty. CK one, I do still wear, and it layers really well with anything woody, by the way, if you're ever curious and you want to keep trying it. I call this Les Impetants <laughs> number three because I can't pronounce that, and I don't care. It's very pretty. It's very pretty, but I use it as a room spray. I don't wear it. It's it's too too sweet and fruity for me. Realities by Liz Claiborne, like the original 90s cube. This is a peachy one. It's, it's pretty. My mom wore this, so it reminds me of my mom. Uh, Calyx, right? Calyx? Calyx? Um, Clinique. Used to be Prescriptives. Alliage by uh, Estee Lauder and Chanel number 19. I think I put uh, too many syllables in that Lauder one. This is like the mother of all greens. Chanel number 19. If you like a green perfume, that is your one. It is beautiful. It is my favorite Chanel fragrance that I've ever smelled. I'm not saying that I don't like others more, but I haven't smelled them all. Uh, Herba Fresca by Guerlain. This is another one of the Aqua Allegory ones. This is mint and fresh cut grass and one of the most beautiful fragrances that I own. I love it. A lot of these aren't going to be necessarily long wearing because uh, they're just very top note heavy. This is a very singular fragrance. This is very one note. It's very linear. This is Hildi Soliani's Stecca and it is just tomato leaf, like tomato vine, tomato plant. Tomato. Should we say it again? Tomato. You gotta like the smell. I love it. A lot of people don't. All right, this category is what I call white florals and solar florals, which are like summery, beachy things that remind me of sunshine. So we're gonna start with uh, my favorite white floral of all time, and this thing opens so cute. I love that. This is Mon Bloom by Ramon Monegal. Ugh. Ugh, if you like like a white floral, like, I mean, we're talking like tuberosi gardenia. This is, 
so good, so good, and does not have the same um, gasoline-y smell that I think some gardenia perfumes can have. Um, Jovan's Island Gardenia. This, I just love it. I'm going to stop talking about these because this will take forever. Uh, Estee Lauder's Private Collection, Tuberose Gardenia. Very beautiful. I have a just gardenia from Crabtree and Evelyn, and then 3121 by Prince, also a uh, gardenia with like some woody sandalwood stuff in it. It's kind of pretty. White shoulders is like classic, super sweet gardenia. This reminds me of my grandma, and I love it. Brazil Dream, Estee Lauder. This has the what I think is just uh, sometimes gardenia, even natural gardenia, I'm talking about the plant, has a gasoline quality about it that I can find a little bit overpowering. This definitely captures that if you like that smell, although that's not around anymore. I have Bronze Goddess, the classic. I have several bottles of this. I think this is the original bottle design. And Azure Soleil by Estee Lauder. Of course, this is um, Azure Soleil is like the precursor to Bronze Goddess. This is the Tom Ford designed uh, or whatever perfume and then they basically retooled it and made bronze goddess uh in the similar can this is where we get into what i call solar florals in a similar similar category we have soleil blanc by tom ford and then eau de soleil blanc these are very very similar to one another a little more citrusy here um but otherwise they're kind of the same and very similar across the board between these four all right the next category here is uh florals and um I'm just kind of going to go through these because I don't really separate my florals. Really? Well, you'll just see what I got. So I have Violet Twig Aromatics back here. I have two of them. On the left, there is Rose Petal. And on the right, there is Pink Carnation. This is an Etsy seller. Pink Carnation is beautiful. If you like a Carnation perfume, holy crap, it's gorgeous. Um, it's very similar to uh, some Carnation perfumes that uh, I've had in the past that don't exist anymore. I have, and they probably shouldn't go like right, right specifically here, Joy by Jean Patou. These are beautiful. If you like, it's an old perfume. It's got a lot of civet. It's just sort of a, 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 a melange of florals. And it, I, I just, I, I do love it. Um, but you, you gotta like civet because it's, it's heavy handed on it, I think. Uh, honey, which is a, a, a animalic kind of a, I think it smells like cat pee. Um, honeysuckle Splash by Estee Lauder is the best honeysuckle perfume ever, in my opinion. Jovan's uh, Wild Honeysuckle. I have um, Imperial Garden by Avon because, hello, the bottle. How cute, right? Modern Muse, and actually it does smell very, very pretty. It's very springy. Modern Muse Eau de Rouge Rose Perfume. Uh, it's Estee Lauder's sort of version of a rose in the Modern Muse family. So it's rose with very Estee Lauder-y kind of perfume elements in it, which I can find a little overpowering at times. Uh, this one would not stand up, but this is Armoise's, um, Arm, Armoise, Armoise, <laughs> Opus 10. Beautiful rose. The best rose fragrance ever, in my opinion. And it's very polarizing. You either like it or you hate it in my experience. Shalimar's uh, sou Souffle de Parfum. This is, um, uh, I got it because I love Shalimar and it was a flanker, so I got it. I don't really care for it. It's similar to Black Orchid by Tom Ford, but not nearly as good. This is fucking gorgeous. This is like designer imposters version. And this came out well before this. I have Oscar, Oscar de la Renta. This is, I love this. This is to me just powder, just powder. And Victoria Jackson, like the, 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 not the comedian, <laughs> Victoria Jackson, the, the makeup person from the infomercials. This is like her signature perfume. This is like a very light version of Oscar. It's really pretty. And I love this in the springtime. I will layer it with honeysuckle splash. And, um, I just think it's gorgeous. Next, we come to possibly my favorite perfume category, and that is uh, Shepra. Shepras are really uh, about the relationship between uh, bergamot and oak moss. So it's a citrus and an earthy, dirty kind of a finish. Fruchulis are sort of the newer version, I'm going to say, rabbit ears of a, because oak moss is very restricted now. So you see a lot of fruchulis. You see a lot of like, instead of uh, citrus, we'll do fruit. And instead of oak moss, we'll do patchouli. I have one uh, perfume that I would, that I would fit into that category. Um, and, um, 
let's just get started. So uh, we have uh, Spectacular by Joan Collins. This, I think, is a very sweet Shepra, Knowing by Estee Lauder, a little more dry. Paradox, Halston, Aromatics Elixir. If you know what any of these smell like, you're going to know what they all smell like. Uh, that's Clinique. Uh, Aramis, this is sort of a classic. A lot of people know this one, um, uh, Shepra. In my opinion, the, 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 like, the mother of all of these, and this, I don't mean that to say that it is the original. I mean to say that it is the most beautiful beautiful is Mitsuko by Guerlain. It is stunning and a gorgeous perfume. You gotta like this category though, and some people don't. That's okay. I have three Azures by Estee Lauder. I have the reformulation here, and then I have a uh, classic, like the, the, the little bit that's left of the old formula, and then I have Azure Door. This was uh, an exclusive through Harrods, I believe, that I had to track down. That was not easy to find, but I found someone in America who had imported it and was selling it. Uh, Charlie. Now this, technically, sure, maybe not, but it smells so, it reminds me of the others so much that I put it in with my Sheepers and I wear it. If I'm in the mood for one of these, Charlie as well. Modern Muse uh, Le Rouge Gloss. This is my only Fruchuli that I have. I'm not a big fan of them, but um, it's a pretty one. I do like it. I also have, um, here we're going to get into sort of smokier, leatherier versions of it. I have Vulcan D'Amour by Diane von Furstenberg in two different, I have the like spray bottle and then the like cologne. This is, um, it adds uh, lilac to it and it is like smoky, beautiful. Ugh, it's gorgeous. Not made anymore. Beautiful perfume, Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. Um, this is like a staple in a perfume collection, I think. Really, right? Don't you think? I mean, really? 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 All right, another favorite category of mine are Orientals. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about these as we go. So... Orientals are, I classify them, you can, you can break them down further, I think, but I classify them as um, amber or spicy. And that is uh, the accords that they're based off of are Ambrine and Mellis. So the Mellis Accord is a very spicy accord. Estee Lauder's Youth Dew is based off of this, as is Opium by YSL. I have Youth Dew here and then the Youth Dew Bath Oil. I use this just like a perfume, like a, like a, like a oil, perfume oil, but also in the bath. Uh, Shalimar is uh, an Ambrine Accord uh, Oriental. Now this is um, sort of based in, as you could guess by the name, it's very ambery. Easily one of my favorites, easily. I have uh, the Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Toilette, the Pure, pure Parfum or Extrait, whatever you want to call it. Um, I also have a, an old vintage bottle here. And then um, that's those, those are those. Now we're going to move on to less exciting ones. I have Yop. <laughs> if you, this was my first fragrance that I ever bought. I was like 16 years old. It wasn't this bottle though, by the way. I have obsession for men. I do not have obsession for women because I do not like it. Youth do Amber Nude. What the hell were they thinking when they got rid of this? This is so good. This is a lighter version of Estee Lauder's Youth Do with more amber in, and it just, it's, it's more sophisticated. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's, it's updated. It's just, ugh. Maison, uh, Aveda, and then a lot of amber ones here. Dune by Christian Dior. I Am Woman by Joan Collins, which I have in the spray. I have like five bottles of that at this point now, because I refuse to run out. I love that stuff. I also have the little, um, uh, fragrance essence, which is like an oil. This is the one that I have that's in the squeezy thing. Now when I get them, I take them and I decant them into a, a darker glass without the without the rubber tip. It just keeps the fragrance, I think, fresher. Um, and then Umbra de Luna by uh, Ramon Monegal. This is um, a beautiful, dirty, nasty amber that is gorgeous. It smells like crotch. I love it. All right, now we have um, sort of tobacco and vanilla smells. I have vanilla sorted into two categories. Don't ask me why. It's just how I do it. Because uh, Givenchy's Pie and uh, Elizabeth and James uh, Nirvana Bourbon, right? Yeah? Yeah. They're both vanilla perfumes. Um, this smells like a 
goddamn ashtray for the first five minutes and then it's beautiful and then it's gone so it's, a, it's an interesting one um but they're different than some of my other vanillas so i just i kind of put them in this category tobacco beneath Bene, Bene by tom ford um 1821 uh, man-made uh, this is uh just tobacco and so strong and really nice really good you gotta like like that strong tobacco smell old school this is so old and there is some left in the bottle this is uh donna karen's like dk men god fuck that smelled awesome michael kors for men uh these are kind of similar to me this is just oh that was so good modern muse nui is that right i feel like um um uh kathleen turner in um uh serial mom who we who we <laughs> Stetson, because you know what? Drugstore man, sometimes you just want to smell like dad. All right, we're going to have some fougeres in this group. And fougeres are a category that I um, don't generally dig. And so I don't have that many. And it confuses the hell out of me. These are just... <laughs> These are going to be your men's fragrances, and it's not what I gravitate towards, but I do like some of them. These I tend to lump in with mood. There are going to be some woody perfumes in here, um, and some of these are really, really gorgeous. Uh, Jiki by Guerlain is a really good example. This is like, um, I think of it as sort of an early version of, of, of Shalimar. It's like Shalimar without the something in it but it has the essence of Shalimar in it in a different way. It's just really good um, and not necessarily a men's, a men's perfume. Lauder for men. As far as I know, that's all it's called. Completely overlooked, often ignored. This is gorgeous. That's amazing. If you like men's fragrance, and I mean, that's just like man. And you know what I mean when I say that. We can all wear what we want, but some things just, you know what a man's cologne smells like. And that's like man with a deep man sound. <laughs> McGregor. This to me smells like Sean Connery. I don't know what Sean Connery smells like, but I imagine that's what he smells like. Aveda Men. This is discontinued and was beautiful. Playboy New York. Don't make fun of me. It's gorgeous and I love it. Uh, Brute for Men. Not a favorite, but you know, it's like, it's like fougere to like a T. So you gotta have it. Eternity for Men. So many people have bad associations with this one. It makes me laugh. It's like, Everyone, you, Eternity for Men, oh my God, I dated a guy in the 90s who was such a dick and he wore Eternity. Everybody does. Melrose Place, because do I need to say anymore? Hugo Boss, uh, Vetiver, Guerlain, Terre d'Hermes, uh, beautiful Woody. Layer this with CK1, it's gorgeous. Enlightenment by Rare Air. This is a local company. Uh, if you like... Um, Okay, Bath and Body Works, Fireside. You know the Fireside candle? That smoky, not Fireside marshmallow, because that's disgusting, and I know some of you like that. One of you in particular I'm thinking of right now, and I think it's looking gross, but that's okay. Fireside, the regular fire. This is like smoky wood. It is so gorgeous. Jeff and I got this as uh, our, our anniversary present for each other. We went um, fragrance shopping and wanted to find something for both of us to wear that we could share that would kind of make us think of each other. This is what we ended up getting. It's really pretty. And then Gucci Rush, which was a travesty when it was discontinued. A travesty! This is very small group of musks and vanillas. So I have Chauvin's musk, Kiel's original musk. These are very similar to one another. If you know what one smells like, you're gonna know what the other smells like. Kiel's smells to me like an updated, more sophisticated version of Chauvin musk, but I still love this stuff. This is what my mom wore when I was a kid. And it just reminds me of her picking me up after um, her and my dad would go out um, for like a dinner and I'd be like with a sitter with with my grandparents and she smelled like this when she came through the door and so this when I smell it I um feel safe it's the best way to describe it um this one is uh Uswa Usva Usva by um Oscar Ali now I am completely butchering that name this is a an oil so this squeezes up and then there's a little like like dropper sticky thing in it this is unapologetically like laundry musk, like to me, like white musk, not 
this. This is more like dryer sheets in an intense way that just gives no fucks. And I hate that smell, but because this is so in your face with it, I actually like this. So when you want to smell like, like really clean laundry, that's the one. And the bottle is beautiful. The box that I actually took the box and brought it out here because the box that it comes in, I mean, look at that. And a little satin bed. And then it's like, all. Oh, how pretty is that? I have another one from Violet Twig Aromatics. This is vanilla. And uh, her vanilla that she makes is very buttery. It's really pretty. If you like like vanilla buttery popcorn, it's, it's, it's really, it's very edible. Um, Eau de Chalamar, a Chalamar light fragrance. And then I also have um, the, what was this, Mon Guerlain. Um, this is a, like, a, what am I, it's lavender vanilla. I don't like lavender. This is actually quite, quite pretty. I had the flanker. They're, they have two flankers, I think, now. Maybe even three, because I think there's like an Eau de Toilette version. Um, I had the Floral, but I returned it because it was like so similar that it didn't make any sense to keep. Eau de Chalamar is my favorite version of Chalamar. I describe it as Chalamar, and these both smell almost identical, by the way. As Shalimar without the incense-y uh, like mid notes. So what you have here is Guerlain's vanilla with lemon. And it smells like gorgeous, yummy lemon cake. It is so, so good. So pretty. So the last thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk to you about right now. Okay, stop, focus, there we go. The last thing I'm going to talk about, um, this and this. Let's talk about this first. Move these aside. When you're looking at fragrance, and I know this is sort of a shopping tip that you didn't ask for, don't ignore the aftershave. They're cheap. They come in plastic bottles. I decant them in glass bottles so they stay a little fresher. This is Bay Rum. It's, I love Bay Rum in like almost any version. I also have the original Clubman. Um, there's a lime one that they make. Uh, there's all different kinds of aftershaves, even uh, Jeanette. I love that stuff. Wear it all the time. Lemon sandalwood. It's beautiful. So it's beautiful. Some people are going to think I'm crazy, but I don't care. I'm just saying, don't overlook these just because they're cheap and in the drugstore. They're fun. And if you don't need something to last a long time, if you just want to spray something on in the summer, if it's just like you just, ugh, they're, they're wonderful. I, I love aftershaves. Two, let's talk about these. These are in a little um, coconut bra thing. I got it in an antique store. Um, it, it had two cups and a string. I just got rid of it. Uh, so these are my like roll-on uh, perfume oils. I have three from Aveda that are long gone. These were from a holiday several, several years ago. Africa, Arabia, and Asia. They all smell like Aveda. They're really pretty. These I want to mention to you because some of them smell gorgeous and they are all very affordable you can get these these crown perfumes who are these man al rehab is um if you look up um on like amazon they're usually like seven bucks a piece chaco chaco musk i think is what this one's called um this is cocoa puffs dude this is cocoa puffs in a bottle and when i smell this or when i wear this i smell like cocoa puffs if you like fruity holy crap this is um africana this is like overdose of fruit this is like fruit loops times 10 some of these are beautiful the point is there's a ton of them look them up cocoa puffs though look them up look up reviews you can you can search through these on like fragrantica um and and find out like if there's ones that you think you might like they are cheap enough to blind buy and just try i get like i think i got like three at a time and i did this twice and like I said, they're like seven bucks a piece. You're going to pay for shipping, I think. I don't think they're like an Amazon Prime thing, but um, they're quite cool. I don't know why I moved those, so now you're just staring at the carpet, but there you go. Um, should I turn this around and say bye? Okay, let's do that. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. It is now like the sun is now blazing in the room. I don't know. And there's blue sky. I don't know what's going on. Um, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Um, and, um, if there's any opinions or favorites or whatever, I don't know, share, share, share. I'm very angry. I've moved my...
my bar is over here at the moment because we're rearranging the living room. So it's, it's all behind the orange things. Um, all right, I'm shutting up now. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing over there? Get out of that mess. What? Is it warm there? What? What is it? What is it? Do you want to get it? Ooh.